Yeah, yo, that wasn't his leg. That was his dick. He was hobbling on that shit. He lost his leg in battle. What are you talking about? <laughs> Flippy, what you just said is not true. Can we just, can we just duct tape Flippy's mouth? We're, we're going to censor that one out. <laughs> Hey there, guys. This is Faded Through Time. I'm Isaiah, and my co-host, President. And we have a stunning guest here. Introduce yourself. Oh, hi, guys. I'm uh, I'm Corey, one of their buds. Mm, absolutely. And our friend here works for the Pennsylvania Renaissance Fair, and he's done a lot of research on his character because the character he is playing this year is an actual historical person. So we thought we'd bring him on the show, ask him a couple questions, and see what he knows about the person he is acting as. Oh, you mean uh, Alexander Radcliffe? Yes. Yeah. Give us, give us a brief description of what, what Alexander Radcliffe was, what did he do, so, Alexander Radcliffe was first a lord, then knighted later, but uh, he is the lord of a place called Ordsall, um, and the oldest of the Radcliffe uh, family, being the father of uh, having John Radcliffe as his father and Anda Shaw as his mother, and sort of sort of had a good good childhood till you know he gets. To his teenage years and 16 hits and his dad dies hmm. but other than that everything sort of sort of after right when his dad dies it starts slowly going downhill downhill so so what what do you mean by downhill there so yeah. like so like he ruled or like very nicely with his sister because they were very close but like i feel like it sort of brought him down a little bit more um because it, in sense of like luck because like then the irish rebelled and like immediately, like his brother went to war and died. Like oh. so, like so, like it sort of went down the hill from there, and then it goes even more downhill when he goes to Ireland himself, and he ends up dying himself. And like it even goes downhill after his death with his sister following suit months after he dies. Mm. So like 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 I said, dad dies, and then just downhill. What? So a lot of family conflict. Not conflict. His dad was sick, and just like his brother was a captain in the Queen's Army. Okay, okay. What what really got you interested to this character? Because every time I see you play him, you're really you're having lots of fun. You're going out there. You're you're just being him, and I think you do an amazing job. Uh, well, you're assigned your characters, right? Yeah, we are assigned our characters. Um, but the thing that I drew to more was just the comedic fact that. The Queen loved the Radcliffe twins, especially Alexander and Margaret, like, the most, because they were, in her eyes, the most beautiful, and, like, personally, I'm not that pretty. <laughs> like, let's, just be, <laughs> let's just be honest. Don't sell yourself for hey, man. Come bro. on, bro. No, 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 no. no. This, this, is, this is just, when, this is when just When honest. you're in the noble garb, though, when you're all dressed up, bro, mm, it still looks mm, nice, but but mm. it, is, it is still, like, a pig in nice clothes. Like, <laughs> hey. let's just be, like this is me like, giving myself, like, an honest review. Like, this isn't me being mean to myself. This is being me honest. Um, but, like, just, not only that, but, like, learning that, like, his him and his sister had this unbroken bond mm. like even though they were twins and like yeah twins have some weird connection but like to the point where like they blame alexander's death on margaret oh mm. like not like the whole thing of like he was too far away and then margaret's death is also blamed off of alexander because of literally the queen told margaret i love you your brother's dead don't die and she was like i'm not gonna kill myself I'm just going to not eat because they just didn't see it that way. Yeah. So it's just like, she just died of hunger. Like that, it's, that's a really, that's, that's sad, but that, that does show the bond there. But like, but like not only that, but like when Alexander became Lord of Ortsal, his mother was still the lady. Like she was still like the head honcho. And like, she like gave Alexander permission to do whatever because he is, 
old enough. He was 16. So he literally asked his mom, do you mind going to our grandparents living there and letting my sister rule with me? And she was completely fine with it. There was no conflict. The mother was like, you two have been inseparable. You learned from basic, like basically from ground zero, everything that Alexander learned, he wanted Margaret to learn too. Like they were like on the same level of knowledge, even with sword play. Mm. Speaking of uh, the sister, we don't need to say names, but just it, like, what's it like working with the the other character at the fair? Do you, do you have the same connection there? Or are you building? We, a, we have a weird. A it's weird. Um, beginning of the year, we're kind of like, eh, well, we'll see how we play it. But um, now, towards closer to the end, we well halfway actually, we started seeing that like. We're not the twins that we wanted to play. Like, we wanted to play that, like, we completely were rude to each other. But, like, over time, we came up to being just, like, the siblings that get annoyed with each other, but they still love each other. And, like, the moment someone steps in and is like, oh, I'm a possible threat to being, taking your brother away. Like, whether it be, like, a threat or, like, like, even a lady, it just seems like she and I both get, like, defensive and we're like, can, can you go away? Like, this is my sister or, like, this is my brother. And it's, like, it's starting that fun bond. But it's like you It's like you went through the cycle of actually having a sister. <laughs> I start have, out like, I, I, don't, I don't really know about you. Man, I have three. I'm on, I'm on <laughs> so I'm wondering, because you're on Queen Elizabeth Court, right? Mm-hmm. You need to you need to clarify because there's been a lot of religious conflict in these times. Mm-hmm. Are you a Catholic or are you a Protestant? He was Protestant. His dad was raised Protestant because of um, living. His dad lived through Mary. Mm. Mm. Like so, like the whole fact of like he. So, got in your view of Mary the first, would not have been Mary again. Uh, to Alexander, he would have probably seen Mary as like the boogeyman. Like, <laughs> yeah. After after every story that he would have been told by his father and how his father had to hide being Protestant, it probably scared Alexander completely and was like, I don't want to... Yeah. Her nicname is Bloody Mary for a reason. Yeah, she's been scared. She burned at least 200 Protestants at one time. Just for no reason. For for them being Protestant. Exactly. Like, practically no reason. So, your character your character's a noble. Yes. How, it's, it's to be a noble, you gotta have a lot of money, man. I, like, so... Not really. Really? It's, it's all more you, of a land thing, it's, right? It's, it's land. It starts with land. Um, okay. And, like, like so, like, technically, back, Alexander's ancestor got the... He didn't even have to pay for this land. Like, he helped uh, one of the past kings in a battle, and he, he won this land. And it was just one of bunch of pig farms like it was just a bunch of people being like this is my land this is my land he took the collaborative of it and just started making a city and when Ortsal became the city he just started taking taxes and that's when the money comes in and like that's just like the base level but then to become a sir you have to do something that the queen deems knightable okay. and that's just like so interesting what did he, what, what what did he do um to be not how did he earn his knighthood yeah. Yeah. he earned his knighthood by like always being for the queen like like when when was robert ever in the military no he well he was at the end of his life but like but like when Devereux was going through his whole spiel on like i need to be king i'm better like i'm mad at elizabeth alexander looked at Devereux and was like i know you as a buddy but we are not friends for saying that you don't say that to her majesty and her majesty's like you're loyal like alexander was like loyal to the T like both the Radcliffe twins were royal were like loyal Mm -hmm. and to the point because like their dads been around Henry the Eighth, Mary, like they've been around through they've been through all of Henry. And it's so weird to think that like when was Alexander born? I'm sorry, I'm just I'm I'm making sure I'm looking at the right person. He was born in uh 1573. I'm looking at the wrong Alexander Radcliffe. Oh. There's multiple. Hey. Because the only out of everyone in his family was John. Was the other John. Give me, the, give me the birth date again. First year. Uh, 1573. Huh. 
So you said he has sisters. I, uh, he very close a to a twin sister. A twin sister, yeah. So he does he have any like brothers and like any any of them get in conflicts with each other? So so pretty much the whole lineage goes Alexander and Margaret. Then it goes William, Jane, John, Thomas, Edmund, Alicia, and Annie. And like Annie and all them, they went to mom. Mom had to deal with them, but like. Alexander treated his brothers like how an older brother would. Not rude, like not. I'm talking about not rude, but like he was very like. I'm not gonna let you be weak. I'm gonna train you to be at my level because Dad's not always gonna be here. So I gotta pass his stuff on to you guys. Like Dad's gonna keep training me, and it's gonna go trickle down to you. Oh shit. Okay. 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 So like. At this time, Alexander would be, at the age that he's at, 16, when he becomes Lord, he would be sword fighting with his brother William. Okay, okay. And teaching his younger brother John how to clean the swords, how to, and then Thomas, how to be, a, how to be more like a Lord, and Edmund to just be, like, comfortable with having responsibility. Man, that guy had the middle age mentality when he was 16. Well, he like, did have help, but it was just like he want he gave them the curriculum of like they need to know this, and like that was it. Babysitting your older brother and little <laughs> older brothers. Yep. Yeah. But he didn't really babysit him. He he literally was like, I'm gonna. I he he was very respectful to his mom. Still, he loved her. So like, Edmund and Thomas were still too young to live with Alexander and Margaret, so they went with their mom. So so did Anne and Jane. So there was only approximately just four kids in that house, all by themselves. And how how long was Alexander's life? When did when did he die? He died at the age of twenty uh twenty six. Really? Six. Twenty six. What was yeah. his cause of death then? Uh. He died when, because when he went to Ireland, he fought and because he was mad because his brother died. He was like, I'm pissed off. They killed my brother. And he went to Ireland, got into a couple fights, started fighting, fighting. One battle, um, the research that I've been looking up did not pop up anything. He, but Ireland? Ireland. Found, yeah, found died in Ireland. I can't... Like, he died with a stab wound in the side. Okay. And because of the time, infection spread and he got a fever, which in that moment, the moment you get infection and a fever, you're dead. Yeah, so he, he, he was killed in battle. Yeah. It's the Battle of Curlew Pass. Oh, Curlew Pass. That moment. sounds so familiar. Oh, okay. Okay, so... Interesting. Died in battle. That at sucks. At age 26. Yeah, yo, he missed a 27 well, because, club. Because he... Damn. He, Damn, yo. <laughs> and the... He was very proud of... I think he had a lot of pride. And that's why I think, like, he was more comfortable in, like, not being like other lords where they're just like, point, go kill. Mm. He was in the fray. He wanted to fight. And, like, the thing is, is, like, he was a part of a group that of fellow nobles that wore that quote unquote wore their birthright on their backs. Mm. Like it was their own little shield of I'm better than you. And he had that pride. And like I feel like that sort of was his downfall. Because oh, like, he sort oh, of like one like, of those jocks you see walking down the campus. Pretty, you pretty were, much you were like ambushed. a preppy jock. You were ambushed. Curly Pass is a, is an ambush attack. Damn. He got swarmed. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. Damn. Like, like, by who? The the Irish. The Irish. The Earl of Tyrone was the one rebelling at Were the they, time. like, brutal? Like, did they, did the Irish, like, kill heavily? Or they the, the Irish were probably, like, one step down from a Scotsman in terms of crazy fighting, but, like, still definitely so they would threw, not want to go up against So they, like, came out running with, like, fucking potatoes in their hand and just started chucking them at the enemy. No, they, they full on, like, I think, imagine, imagine, I think, ironically, potatoes weren't in Ireland yet. 
You're fucking. I, I, no, here's, let here's me, the let actual me fact. Let me fact check that. Continue the conversation. Uh, um, it wouldn't have been that. It most likely would have just been like, hey, our local blacksmith made these spears. Are these good? Uh, maybe not, but I also have my pitchfork. Like, they, they, it was literally like mad, like angry mob style of cudgels and like just branches. Like, it was more so like you're not beat, you're not usually. Like, unless you're a high-ranking Irish official at that time, you kind of don't have a sword. When did you die? 99. 1599. Pot- potatoes would have been introduced 10 years ago. So, oh, barely. Oh, yeah, exactly. Barely. There you go. See? Barely. I they was so with, close. They killed you with potatoes. <laughs> Whatever and, you believe, man. And the Irish died how, because how they, they stab him? potatoes. Yeah. How'd they stab him with a potato? Oh really? They, he got stabbed in the side. Like he you got French fried. He got exactly. Yes. They, they, they made a really sharp fry. fry. You know when you cut the fry. <laughs> you know how you cut you a piece of paper sliced. and then you can get the, they can be like a paper cut. Oh my gosh! <laughs> <laughs> so you you actually only you lived and died within Elizabeth the first reign. Yeah. Damn. So you only experienced one monarch. Yeah. So okay, what what would you think about Henry the Eighth? That's that's Elizabeth's dad. So, so I did a little like thought on like how they thought about him. They thought sort of like in the beginning, like every noble during Henry's beginnings, thought he was like kind of okay. Then started going downhill. So like, sort of I feel like you would see Henry as like respectable because it is a monarch, but also as a warning of don't do this. Of like don't go mad. Don't go mad, and if the woman you love dies. Don't remarry. And don't, like, also don't be the reason that your woman dies. And also don't get gout. <laughs> True. <laughs> don't eat red meat every single day of your fucking life. Damn. And so then get then get something in the leg. Yeah. So you're telling me, that, like, tw- the 26 years he lived, and he's like a noble, and he has all that land. He wasn't piping any women, he was just... Well... Did he have any children? He did not have children. Oh, no. that sucks. And... But they, I think by the age of twenty six, you probably would have. Yeah, like. But here's years. here's my thing. Also. So he he might have had children that were illegitimate, but like. Oh. Maybe. Was he married? Nope. Was it so? Then he, he could have been. I mean, the only person he loved, um, in a romantic manner, was weirdly enough his first cousin, huh. Marie, and um, it's uh, and like, if uh, if you did well, you, you gotta <laughs> realize that that's that's the time like. Like the whole keeping in the family, like yeah, it's a joke nowadays. But like back then, that was Have that was keep life. the bloodline pure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and like bloodline pure. Mm, you and the thing, like, and you can't, and like the thing is, you can't really get mad. <laughs> you taste you, like you couldn't really get mad at it. You couldn't really get mad at Alexander because like he didn't really know. Like he knew that he had uncles. He knew all this stuff, but he didn't really know his cousins because mm. like his dad was just like we fell apart. Who cares? Yeah. And like so like. When he found out that, hey, that's your first cousin, he was just like, well, great. Like, uh, now I just, now I feel weird that we banged. Like, now, now it's weird. Now, now it's, it's like, it's like now it's weird. Thanks. So, like, he pretty much, like, after, like, he found that out, he was just like, we're just going to be family. And just, was just living in a life of, like, maybe he, he was piping some women. You don't know. Because they don't put that on. Because why would you want to soil a good, so, so, man, so, a good noble with pets? So he just piped his cousin. He piped his cousin, bro. Absolutely piped his cousin. Probably, yes. Is she attractive? Because she was supposed to be very attractive. So, like, you know, apparently all well, the like, rats. If they're like, related, then probably. Yeah, they got the, they the got children. The probably not. Uh, <laughs> my face is. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, like, like, like I said, he probably only did it once and probably was just like, like, yeah. Didn't really, really have kids yet, so he's just like, uh, gotta probably be safe about this. Um, are there any any famous descendants of the Radcliffe family? Um, actually, yes. Maybe through uh, maybe through one of his brothers or something like that. Like distant down the line, um, there is Anne Radcliffe. Um, she made the Radcliffe College of Harvard. Um, there also was the actual like. John Radcliffe, governor of Virginia. He was another one. Um, There was one more. 
I, I can't remember it. Um, I think it was literally Robert Radcliffe took over as Earl of Essex or Robert Devereux's job. Mm. They took over. One and of it's... the other one of the other characters at the fair this year. Yeah. What, what about uh uh uh? What was that guy from uh, Harry Potter? What's his name? Daniel. Oh, Daniel Radcliffe. Daniel. Oh Radcliffe. yes, yes. Daniel Radcliffe is a descendant of them. He's what? somewhere part of that house. Yeah, what? he's a part of that house. What? Surprise! He wasn't part of Gryffindor. He was just part of Radcliffe House. Damn. Oh man. Wait, all Harry Potter is isn't cousins. real. Which all we do is bang what? our cousins. Oh, <laughs> damn, 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 pretty damn, much. Damn. Damn, buddy. Would he kiss? Who'd he kiss? Hermione? Uh, Old oh, Ron. Yeah. Oof, Ron. Ron. Ron Weasley. He kissed my girl. They are you. But, like, <laughs> what What would court life consist of if you're traveling with the queen? Um, Are we doing a procession in a shire, or are we just, like, well, chilling? We're just chilling, walking down the street, uh, or we just, like, go, some are, we, shoes, are we just, like, shy. are we just, like, <laughs> just going about Ex- our explain, way? Explain what you do in a, in a fair day. So, pretty much, we follow the queen around. We make way for her. Um, we are even her pockets. Like, the, mm. imagine, literally... The a celebrity nowadays with all those like people that just follow her just to carry her bags, that is her court, and that's like similar to what we do, mm. and that's like similar to what they also dealt with was like, not only that but like when the queen went to like these places, she would have like these huge processions and all that, and like she literally would only pick like the best of the best. Mm. And, like, the group with the Radcliffe's were in were, quote-unquote, her party crowd because the Radcliffe's were just young and gave her that energy of being like, you know, I may be getting old, but I can still act young because I still got these hip young kids with me. (laughs) And that's literally how, like, they were. Like, the Radcliffe's were, like, the defining factor of, like, if you look at, like, the starting lineup on any, like, game or team Mm. or anything... They were on the we party the team. Radcliffe, yeah. We were on the party team. Like, it it wasn't like... There was no time when the Radcliffe's would, like... we They would take it serious if they had to be serious. But, like, if they didn't, they would just... They would goof. They would make jokes. They would, like, bring the mood up a little bit. Because they were always, like... Hey, you know, you could just have a life like ours. You know? Yeah, you had to get... Yeah, your dad gave you this when he was... When he, when he got tired of doing it. My dad died. <laughs> like, oh he just didn't care. He was just like, you know, life needs to be happier. Like, I'm not going to make it sad for everyone else. I've got, okay, I've got another question for you. So, you're traveling with the Queen pretty often, right? Yep. So, what do you think of her makeup? Her very, her very white complexion. Very porcelain, almost. Do you know, do you know where that comes from? What's used in... Mm, uh, Elizabethan do you, like, do you look at her and like see the glare of the sun because how much white makeup she has on we're talking about the literal queen not the act- actress like how would your character feel about the uh... he would just keep his mouth shut he would not say a word because mm. like he might have like ideas of like being like, be, like he might just be like like this is the queen she is literally like god given mm. Like, God chose her. So she is drop-dead gorgeous. Mm. Like, if you look at a supermodel, that's the queen. Mm. Like, you're walking with a supermodel and being like, dude, this is what the standards need to be at. Mm-hmm. And you don't look like this. Holy shit. Do you know Do you know what was in the makeup? No. Lead. And the lead would corrode her skin. And it would shave most of it away. And even the makeup remover that she used had mercury, which again is a toxic substance to humans. Kind of looks like. So, some historians believe that she was actually killed because of the amount of makeup that she wore. Because she would like add on more and more. As more and more of her skin decayed, she needed more and more to cover it up. So she just kept pounding that shit on and. You know, she ended up dying because and she's it's a shame so... that some girls still look that way. Oh my fucking god! Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Maybe they're doing the Elizabethan makeup makeup tutorials. Take it's your just... lead-based powder. 
Oh, it's like thick off their face. It's like me doing like stage makeup and shit. I'm just like, oh, oh man, I know. I'm, the I'm good for, old days, dude. I'm good at stage makeup, man. I don't care. I make much online. Fierce as shit. <laughs> Elizabeth was an excellent ruler, though. Yeah, absolutely. She she. It's, it's unfortunate it, that she didn't have a true heir. She's Queen E. The, the thing the thing that the thing that really makes it cool about Queen Elizabeth is the fact that like, you know, nowadays like, everyone wants to throw who was the first like feministic person and like you got to look back at elizabeth because elizabeth literally like there was people like politicians like other dignitaries looking at her being like yo when are you gonna marry a guy and she goes i'm not marrying a guy because i'm married to my country Uh, like she pretty much like smacked them away she is quoted as saying i am married to england yes yeah, that's absolutely correct. Like, she literally is, like, in my opinion, the biggest, like, I don't need a man status. Like, even if someone could be like, oh, there was someone earlier, like, in the Viking era, I don't care. Like, Queen Elizabeth, like, threw it at men's throat and being like, I am the queen of my land. Get the hell away from me. She, she's, she sort of saved what it meant to be a queen because directly before her, we already mentioned Mary the First. So Mary the First was actually the first queen of England, and we know how that reign went. Yeah. It was very oh, short-lived, yeah. and she burned a lot of Protestants, and she is not remembered well. Yeah. So Elizabeth, with that act to follow, it's like she her per- she turned her, around, and, and she was a queens. whole new, and then she was a whole new branch over the well. She was well, this, the thing the thing is is like, well, do you know why she was Protestant? Why? Her because no. Oh, no, 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 no. Because she initially... Well, she she would have been Protestant because in order for her dad to marry her mom, Anne Boleyn, mm-hmm. he had to get a divorce. And to get a divorce, he can't be Catholic. Yeah. So he broke away from the Catholic Church, made the Anglican Church, got his divorce because he's the head of the church now. Yeah. So that's what I was tr- about to get into, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, was She was technically born Catholic... Uh, Protestant, sorry, Protestant, but, like, she was okay with, like, the Catholic ideas, because, like, you have Mary with Catherine, and they were Catholic, and so, like, she was very accepting of that. Bloody Mary, or Mary, takes control, it was over. Like, Mary locked Elizabeth in a tower, and Elizabeth was scared. Because she didn't get messages, she just got fed to stay alive. And she knew one of these days, Mary's gonna come for me, and I'm just gonna accept that fate. She literally just gave up. She just sat there and was like, I'm ready. The per- It took her a lot of, like, stress. And, like, the thing is, is, like, even, like, during Mary's reign, like, she was hoping someone would save her. She felt like that, like, princess in a tower. But, like, the only person that came was, like, people who brought food until someone came and said, you need to get ready, your sister is dead. And she had that sigh of relief that, like, which is like, holy shit, I'm okay. So, like, so... Would you want to call her good Queen Bess? Would you love that? Would, would you Would you refer to her as that? Or would she kill you for that? I think she'd probably kill you. She'd probably kill us. I think she'd kill you for that. What? (laughs) But, um, the thing is, is, like... Did you say? The thing is, is, like... Then when, like... There was, like, things that Liz... Hang on. I wanted to say this one thing. During Elizabeth's coronation, like, she was very, like... Still upset with how, like, her sister acted with the Catholics. That, like, she even told the priest, like, You do anything Catholic-like, I won't be here. Like, it needs to just be protestant to the t and they made it like very closer to catholic and she had a blinder and she just shut the blinds and just sat in blinds did not did not show her face for her entire coronation Hmm. because the priest wanted to be very catholic about it and she was like no you know about my past you just pissed off your queen and she was like i'm done with you like to me that's the biggest, like, it, it's as if someone walked up, to, drove up to you while your windows were down, 
and like just threw like a rotting milkshake at you and then when you turn back they just rolled it up it's like they told you no and then to throw to add insult to injury like you still you did practically something that you feel is normal take another hit you've stopped making sense <laughs> i am so out of it also uh i was gonna say so as we're on top of queen elizabeth um I just I, i'm sorry i'm like virgin officer right the blow because i like queen elizabeth is really cool assassination attempts you, you guys <laughs> Oh so, man, her assassination were, attempts. Do they ever they? mention them inside of like Queen of Scots? Oh yeah, Mary of Scots. Yes, there she wasn't tried attempt, yeah. three times. Mm. Three times, Mary of Scots tried three times to kill the queen. All three failed, and the third one got her thrown in jail and beheaded. Awesome. They, the Queen Elizabeth, was like, "I gave you three chances, and you still try to kill me." Are you stupid? No one's saying one. You. Mm. <laughs> I, have, I have a question, too. So, Queen Elizabeth is referred to as the Virgin Queen, right? Mm-hmm. Do you think that's true? Because I think that she and Robert Dudley were a little bit too close. I believe I believe they were. Her or even Raleigh. Hey, hey, hey. To an extent, Raleigh. She, Not only that, but like, for like... In the ass. But like... Time no, out. No, time no, out. No, 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 no. Like, like... Am I wrong? Fucking yes, because yes, I love Jesus. <laughs> yes, oh that God. you're very wrong in that because, like, pretty much Her Majesty. Yeah, she probably would have, but like, here's the thing. First of all, she's not married. How bad is that image? Banging some. Imme- dude. Yeah, immediately being like, you are not married, and you like Protestant isn't like. But listen, she okay. She... If, I, if I was Queen Elizabeth and I wanted to sleep with someone and I wanted no one to know, right? You do it in secret. I, I, I sleep with this person. I tell no one. If I find out that anyone knows, I know that he spilled the beans and he's dead. So if he wants to risk that, go for it. But that's his life. So. But then also anyone who tries like throwing it out, she could just be like, slander against the crown and immediately kill them. Mm. She can just pretty much erase history. So like, there could have been moments in history where they had people write, write, Queen Elizabeth was seen banging Dudley. And Dudley probably got yelled at for it because, you know, Dudley was her plaything. So he wouldn't die right away. Mm. But then the editor of that of that article, dead. Really? She would just kill him. Awesome. Like, they li- there's actual, like, theories. And th- this is, like, getting a little bit in theory-wise of, like, the famous player at Kit Marlowe. Mm. Angered the queen to the point where she put out a hit on him and killed him. Awesome. Like, the bar fight was her idea. Because she was like, he did something, he pissed me off, I'm gonna kill this guy. Or you think there was, like, fanboys of, like, uh, Queen Elizabeth? Do you think there was fan club of Queen Elizabeth where people were like, Queen Elizabeth, okay, let's see what she's doing today. That's called court. Court? Oh, yeah, the, the, the court. court. The court literally, like, if you get a letter saying, Her Majesty's coming to your house to stay for the night. One, you want to make this place look damn well nice. Absolutely. One. Two, stock it. Because not only that, you are not just taking the, Her Majesty, you are also taking all of her guests. So uh-huh. if she has a hundred people with her, that's including servants and courtiers. Absolutely. You're feeding a hundred extra people and Her Majesty who needs the best of the best. So like And then the, you gotta double it because second plates yeah, like, like, <laughs> and the queen would just leave in a mess. Like, literally, it would be like you. They walk in, party, 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 sleep, sleep, sleep. Wake up, eat, 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 and then bolt. And your house was a mess. Like, That's awesome. There was, there's been actual like historical documents that like when a monarch or monarchs who have gone to places, the places have been destroyed. Like fancy tables, anything destroyed because they just would drink, party. Go to sleep, eat, leave. I wouldn't be surprised, especially with Henry VIII, with that happening. Oh, Henry VIII! I can like see Henry chairs. VIII, man. I can see Henry VIII totally Holy shit. having an extra chair just for his gout leg. Such, such I'm an early Henry, but sure. <laughs> going extra crazy when he went senile. He didn't go senile. He just went crazy. And every STD on the block, bro. What are you talking about? <laughs> his yeah, mind was gone. Leg. And infected leg, yeah. Yeah, yo, that wasn't his leg, that was his dick. He was hobbling on that shit. He lost his leg in battle. What are you talking about? 
<laughs> Flippy, what you just said is not true. Can we just, just duct tape Flippy's we're, mouth? We're gonna censor that one out. Can, can we just can we just can we just put duct tape we're on his mouth and just simply not. just talk? No, you no. and me just talk? No, Flip, Flippy has good questions. He does yeah, have yeah. good questions, yeah. but but we'll, but we'll, he he only gets to talk when he raises his hand. No, nah, fuck out of here! I had so much character. All right, let's talk about. Oh, uh, say Queen Elizabeth. She. Okay, so I know, I know. I know. He was in the, the middle fuck of a You quick. think Queen Elizabeth could win in a fist fight? Yeah. Okay. I don't know why. Know. Why? Because first of all, you have to get through the yeoman. Okay. She has. If you if you're going true Elizabeth, the yeoman are like the freaking secret service. Like the moment Her Majesty goes, there's a halberd getting chucked at your head. I know, but I don't know, but like, was she like? What was her frame like? Was she like five, like an average height of woman? Oh, like? He's asking if she could actually win in a fight. I don't. So? I don't think she could. She probably could. We're not gonna pick you up. Aren't they the trained? Bike, don't leave. Yeah, come back. Well, give me a second. We're gonna get a little louder. Well, okay. okay he's this very off into the distance. All right, Noah. How many? Uh, how many? How many chickens would it take to kill you? <laughs> <laughs> What's Wait, okay, uh... Wait, how many chickens do you think you could take are, down are with they all, Are they all attacking me? Yeah, I think you already asked you. me I know, but I'm asking you again. How many hens do you think you could take down before they get you? Alright, how many kindergarteners? Don't switch the question. <laughs> chickens. How about okay. first graders? Ch chickens. <laughs> okay, chickens. Um, like, I'd say... I'd say, like, 200? 200? There's no fucking way. Because, like... Cause what if are we 20, talking before? What if 20 eight? fly at you at once? You're dead. They're... they're they're, they're peckers. Like, what, what can they do to you? They can, like, they can rip out your damn throat. <laughs> with, with what? They're peckers. They bite. They have teeth. They, they have claws. They can cut your okay, jugular. But, yeah. like, I feel like I can take on a lot of chickens. Wait, we talk about, we talk about, like, freshly groomed farm, farm chicken? Yes. Then no, then no, you'll be fine. What about roosters? I, I think I can... Same thing, because they trim, they, like, trim the nails down. I, I think, I think I can take on about 200 chickens before I die. Why are we talking about this? Queen <laughs> Elizabeth the first. <laughs> Why the star? Sorry. <laughs> I don't even think the queen could take that much. Because like I said, she is literally okay. weighted hand and foot. Like, it's just like, if the queen got tired and she's like, I don't want to walk anymore. And there was no chair. Peasants would make the chair and just move. How do you think her alcohol tolerance was? Probably good because she probably she probably went to every place, had a nice fancy bottle of like uh, twenty year wine and just went to bed. At this time period, you would have had some kind of alcohol every day, every so single like, day, and it wasn't as strong as it is now. No, yeah, no, not not, not as strong, but like she would have at least. I don't know if she would have had ale. She probably would have preferred wine more than anything, but she exactly. probably would have had a, at least a glass of wine every day. Absolutely, that would. Have... Huh, that's interesting. Yep. Yeah. No, you had a question coming up. But yeah. Uh, what was the question? I uh, Okay. So I know that you would have died at this point. But <laughs> later, the are you familiar with the English Civil War? Not really. I was going to ask you which side you would have fought on. But I feel like there is a sort of very significant side you would have fought for. It's it's difficult though because it's it's a Catholic king versus a Protestant parliament. You were very loyal to the king, but you were also Protestant. So I wanted to know which side that you would have preferred. You would have probably there is, the king. There, there is a, a party animal aspect to the the royalist side. The other side, they actually banned Christmas and sports and theater. Yeah, he which is really kind of sad. He would have 100% been like, I'm going to go with my king. I mean, he would have just been like, I'm going with my king. Just how he was raised. Gotta live for the monarchs, right? Yep. Oh, feudalism. <laughs> so, d during the Ren Frey, I just want to clarify this is actually, like, uh, period appropriate. Uh, you guys talk about the new land. 
how how do you think time was back then just figuring out about this whole new area called Virginia? Good, good, question. good question. Across the sea. How, how do you think your character would be like, there's more out there? We have this. I heard this expands so far out. And we have this little spot. And it's the new land. Mm-hmm. How do you think they like their feelings were about it? How do you think everybody They're- was like... They were probably intrigued by it, um, due to his like just being old enough to deal with it. Um, he would have probably been like, "I appreciate this, but I I see what I got here. Like, why would I want to restart?" It's like us seeing Canada. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like it's like or, or like uh, England now, or you know UK. It's now. like it's, it's like, like imagine like... imagine you're living here. Yeah. And we find a new island. A brand new island, and we start colonizing it. But it's massive. But it's massive. Like I'll say, I'll say Antarctica. We we discover a massive island out in the Pacific Ocean that just no one ever looked. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and like you have the option of keeping the land you have, mm-hmm. and I'm saying you have multiple land that you're making money, like bank. Absolutely. Would you give them up just to go and start like making money? On a risky adventure, like we don't have plane at this time. You don't have a plane. You don't have a car. You got nothing. You literally are going on boat, and that boat is not even a cruise liner. It is wood. Maybe I would send my servants go out there and build a new, new, new plots on. The how land. do you know they're going to do it in your name? Well, that's how you sign contracts. And it's maybe this one of the branches why you know the revolution came out. How do you know they're even going to survive the trip? <laughs> that, 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 but also, that, that, but also. Period. That, but also, like, imagine this, like, you can come there and be like, be like, oh, this is my land, and immediately be like, no, it's this guy's land. And they can literally just rip up your document and be like, you never gave this document, and you are screwed. And, and then, then you go to the queen and be plus like, these also guys. Natives. Oh, yeah. you, you, could, you could land a couple miles down shore of where you wanted to land, yeah. and that tribe is hostile to everyone. Mm-hmm. If, if you're looking for a tribe, like, two miles north, they could be totally peaceable to you. Like... If if you missed, you might have ended up in a place that you really didn't want to be. Damn. And that brings your name down, because when when if there's one per, if there's a crew that survived, if they drop off the people and they they're on the they're on their boat and they see the people getting slaughtered, they come back and they're like they're like yo, like if Alexander gave someone a charter and got like money together to get this piece of land, and it killed people, your name is on that land. You just pretty much everyone's gonna look at you and be like, well, "Look at this guy! You spilled blood. You're an asshole." Damn. That's I mean, look at the the colony of Rono, the one that disappeared. Oh yeah, Raleigh's first one. He, the governor, sailed back, and his trip got halted. It took an extra couple of years because they were at war with Spain. There were too many ships that were needed. By the time he got back to this colony, it was gone. Everyone thinks so. It's it's all it's all risky in the new world. It's not. It it is a great unknown, but I would understand your hesitance to even want to do anything. I thought there's something about that being like they actually went to like a nearby tribe or some shit like that or converted. But but here's here's the thing that is that is highly likely. Here's the scary thing though. But you got to think of it in this perspective, like for Raleigh, like now your name is soiled because even if you tell all your crew. Tell no one. There's still going to be someone that's like, I don't care. I'm going to tell someone. And Raleigh's name goes. Because everyone's like, good job, Raleigh. You couldn't even keep one thing right. And it's like, you get shit. Like, you are, everyone will be like, yo, you suck. Like, look at us. We got our land already squared away. Our parents gave us this land. What do you have? Nothing. Where's your people? Gone. Like, that was so painful, probably, for him. Damn. <laughs> the the lost colony of Roanoke is really interesting. That is, that I can't is... imagine. The only thing that was left that they they kind of left behind as a clue was just the word Croatoan on a on a tree, and like that was the name of a nearby tribe. But yeah. like they they didn't say like they didn't take the time to write. We're going to the Croatoan, or Croatoan helped us, yeah. or Croatoan attack. They just wrote Croatoan. 
left. Maybe they thought that was good enough. He's like, ah, oh, yeah, I get to eat fucking well, the, the question is then, was it a question of time? Were they were they attacked and needed to run? Or like, but who's who's in the middle of an attack and is like, wait a minute, let me carve a tree real quick. Like that, that doesn't make sense to me. Why would you just carve one word into a tree as, as your clue? People were fucking idiots back then. They weren't intelligent. They're like... Actually, for, for their time period, they were the smartest. Yeah, for their time period? Like, bro... You, like, can't, you can't compare their time period to our time period. Yeah. We also aren't even sure that Croatoan is even, like, a, a clue. It could just be, like... You know, like, Croatoan it, was here. It's, it's <laughs> one word on a tree. You can't even really know... When it was put there. Maybe they were making maps or some shit. I don't fucking know. <laughs> they were like, oh, this is... Croton. This is Croton yeah, like, people, people would, like... I know for Raleigh, he had it hard when he came back. Because, like, immediately there were crew telling people, and they were just like, oh, look, it's bad luck Raleigh. Like, he was bad luck. Because it was like, dude, you lost an entire village. This is not cool. Mm. How big was the village? Like 20 people? There was... There were 150 passengers on the boat. Mm-hmm. And... Definitely not like seven. I believe John Wolf is the name of the person who was the... Governor of, of Roanoke. And his... Granddaughter... Is the first European to be born in the Americas. Just for her to go missing. Yes. Just for her and her mother and basically John Wolf's entire family to just vanish. He and John Wolf died not knowing whatever happened to his family. That's fucked up. Yeah, it is. It was he died led, alone in Southern Ireland, which is It like was really led bad. by Sir Humphrey Guilford. Mm. That that's the the establishment of the Rona colony was an attempt by Sir Walter Raleigh to find the first permanent English settlement in in North America and England, led by Humphrey Gil Gilbert. So, like, the guy who gave Raleigh the idea was, like, Humphrey Gilbert. That's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, the first Roanoke colony was founded by Governor Ralph Lane. How do you think the Queen Elizabeth would think of the idea if she could just look back or she's watching from above from heaven or something like that? Looking down at the American Revolution, this uh, this small little village or land we claimed now has grown so large, and now they're breaking away from their monarch. How do you think she would feel in that situation? Would she be like, what the she would fuck? look at the heirs. She'd look at the heirs. She would look at the throne because a lot of people liked her, the queen. Yeah. Like, she was, yeah, she was the queen. Yeah, we had to do all this stuff, but she wasn't like, she wasn't bad, like, she was very calm, and very, like, if she raised her voice, you knew you were gonna die the next minute. Because, like, she would be very adjust, but very- White, sorry, John White is his name. I yeah. don't have to make sure, John White. Yeah. Um, but, like, she was very calm and collected as a ruler. And, like, a lot of her people, like, that took over after her, weren't really calm. They were like, ooh, we got the power now. We got the best power. They kind of got power hungry. Damn. And it exploded. So I feel like if Elizabeth's line continued... You, okay, I, I'm sorry. Continue. I'm if Elizabeth's you. line continued, she probably would have... Uh, we still would have been England. We still would have been a colony. Because, like, we probably would have been so calm with how, like... They were, they were probably raised at that time. Very calm, very like how Elizabeth was. Because like, you have that. Yeah, yeah. I could be a descent, I could be a descendant of you. And you have that, you give me that thought of like, I have to keep, uphold your name. But if you just are like, oh, you're my heir. And I'm not even related to you, really. I don't care. That's crazy. I, like, who, who was her heir? Like, who was her successor? James the Sixth of Scotland, who was King of Scotland at the time. He became James the First of England. And how did people feel about that? 
it was actually a pretty swift proceeding because the poli- the politicians and the the courtiers at the time all made sure that we were like all established. That, yes, we know that King James James the Sixth is going to be the next king, and they made sure that everything was sort of laid out in front of them. And he was coronated very quickly after her, after her death. How, like how did uh, how did like everybody feel about her death? Like like what, like obviously everyone was surprised. She, she's the good queen. She. She she earned all the nicknames that were ever given to her. How nice. how bougie was her funeral, do you think? Like was like probably like bougie massive. upon bougie. Yeah. Massive. Like, bougie, bougie. They they probably like Especially like, after nowadays her. they they believe that this rule came from monarchs in the past, but there's a rule in England that like and it's just like what they would do as like an honorary thing, but like it's sort of like an unspoken like law but rule it's like if the queen dies everything stops like pretty much country done like we're not a country at the moment we are mourning leave me alone yeah damn that would suck how do you think damn the, how do you think they, like everyone else in the world like heard about that or something like norway or sweden I mean, speak of mouth so like if i had if i had uh Swedish cousin that went to England, he'd come back and be like, the queen's dead. Like, here's here's what the printing press printed out. She's gone. And, like, they'd be like, holy shit. The printing press? The printing press was around at this time. I thought the printing press was invented here in... No. No. Nope. Okay, but yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I, I like hearing about, like, deaths of, like, other countries, like, Monarchs and stuff would have been absolutely crazy back then. Nope. You, you didn't. Like, nowadays, we can just look on the look on our phones and see, like, oh, the queen died, or this person died, or this happened. Or, like, the queen's husband. Like, yeah. And, like... Her that- coffin was carried downriver on a huge barge that had a whole bunch of torches on it, so it, like, it made the, the river around it glow. Aww. And then she was, her coffin was taken to Westminster Abbey in a hearse drawn by four horses with black velvet over them. Oh, she's sad. Yeah, that is sad. But, like, so, like... Very regal, though. Back Very then, regal. back then, like I said, it would have been by mouth. So, like, a king could be sitting there for, like, a year, and then all of a sudden someone comes with, like, an actual thing from England being like, yo, look, look what happened. And it's like... Holy shit. Do you want to know how how word of something like that would have traveled? Church bells. And even to why we're in that one play where we were screaming a conflagration yeah. because the church bells were going off. Uh-huh. That even back then meant, hey, something is happening or something just happened that you need to know. So you're aware of that. So you're asking people what's going on, what's happening. Hopefully someone in your town knows what's going on, or at the very least, you're all prepared for whatever news is coming. So, the church bells at Westminster Abbey would have started ringing, and then churches around it would have started ringing their bells, continuing, stretching out across all of it, essentially. Oh my god. They, 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 okay. They, they, they ask, that's how, now that you mention that, that makes sense because in the conflagration lies and you know, the, 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 mus- uh, the play we did, and uh, in Hamilton... You can hear the church bells ringing, like after they won the they won the revolution. Where he said that, I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." Because that's, that's the story of the Liberty Bell, because that's yeah. the first one that was wrong when we won our independence, and it broke because the dude was so fucking happy. But yeah. like, he must have been like, "Fuck yeah, yeah." <laughs> yeah. Uh, but that was the first bell, and then that's that's how the the message would have been sent out, essentially. <laughs> My cool. question that I was going to ask you, because you would have lived during this event, the Spanish Armada was the fiercest navy in the world, and in 1588, England destroyed it. So I want to know, how would you feel? How would you feel if you found out that your navy just crushed what was supposed to be the world's largest and most indestructible navies? Alexander would God have save just, the queen, right? He would have just been like, he would have just sat back and been like, well. 
Hell yeah. Spanish yeah. learned their lesson up. Like, you would have felt so proud about it. You would have been like, you'd have been like, we crushed them. Especially because, think about this Mary the first was married to the king of Spain. <laughs> yep. Mary the first was married to Philip the second of Spain. Damn. So, yeah, imagine that too. You just, you, you, you move past the, the Bloody Mary rule. And now you get to crush the, the Spanish Armada about, what, 30 years later? Boy, Spain is not in a good place. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> literally, it would literally be England giving them a big middle finger and then just being... All the nobles would have just been like, <laughs> what was even the challenge? Like, huh, we're the all-star British. Like, it was... And the British would rule the waves after that from that point until... Beyond World War Two, like they they still had the best navy. I would say up until maybe World War Two, with the with what the Germans did in their in their massive. Screw Greek you! <laughs> but <laughs> so Royal Britannia, man. We spoke a lot about your character and going through this man's life, a lot of characters around surrounding his life. You work at the Ren Fair. Uh, let's talk more about that real quick before we go. What do you think? It, it is like acting as Sir Radcliffe and introducing him to other people who have never met him before. It's interesting because like there's some people who who like joke and be like like oh this guy's not real and the in the moment I go I am look up the name and they and they was like what's the year and I tell them the year and they go oh my gosh you are real <laughs> it's like this is Lady Margaret and they go. Oh my gosh, you guys are and, and they like it is it is the most hilarious thing because like you can have a history buff come in and they they could be trying to impress the girl next to them and they're like they're like ah oh, these people aren't real and you tell them yes you are and they see you are because they only looked in books mm -hmm. not in actual history. It is the best feeling when you get that one history buff that just goes, Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, I'm wrong. I'm wrong. Like, like it's sort of like a pride, a prideful thing, but also like sort of like rubbing it in, like, like yeah, I did my research better than you did, and you liked history. People who think they know history. <laughs> People who think they know history. People who actually know history. So, is there any like favorite altercation? Not altercation. <laughs> uh, like interaction. Interaction with a guest as your character. Um, have there been any really, really wholesome moments that you've had? Yeah. It's sort of wholesome, um, but kind of a fun moment. Was, uh, so me, me and the actress that is playing Margaret Radcliffe, uh, we take into going to the streets uh, and just asking people, like, take a side, mine or Margaret's. And, like, a wholesome moment was, like, like, because, you know, you, you don't want to see, like, I played it off as... We finished it off very nicely, and I'll get to that, but, like, my big thing was, like, was, like, you know what, I was in a really weird mood, and I wanted to see how, how other people would respond to this argument, and it was, who should rule, who should rule Ortsal as the main ruler? Mm. Me, the lord of Ortsal, or the lady of Ortsal? And, like, like, you sort of are, like, hoping you lose this one, mm. but, like, there were moments where like people would start looking at me and be like, "Ooh, this guy's right," and I was like, "I was like, I was like, so like, I was just like, I'm gonna kind of screw this up more, but like, I purposely was like, Alexander would be more willing to let this go, but like the bit had a good, funny interaction, cause like, <laughs> we did a round of couple drunk people, so this is what made it more interesting was, the, <laughs> uh, the actress that was playing Margaret goes, goes. Just remember, I'll give everyone alcohol and we'll have the best party ever. And all I see is everyone go, yeah! And I was like, I've lost. Like, I've lost that <laughs> and, fight. And the battle's and, over. And I, and I immediately come back swift. And I go, I go, well, I will build distilleries, wineries, and bakeries. So, so a party will always last. And I won. I won uh, just off the fact of, like, supply smart. and demand. Smart. And, like... At the end, everyone looked at, like, everyone was like, oh, great. Like, now the Lord, now the Lord's going to be all pissy. But, like, I landed by saying, you know what? 
let's work together on this one. Mm. Let's just keep working together. Good and then we just walked away. And everyone was like, that's a true man right there. I was like, like that's a true brother, because I'm her brother. What? And they just looked at us like... <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Alright, alright. Um, there's one more question I gotta ask. Was there anything that made the character more, like easier to play because you resonated with them and was there like conflicts with the character that made you feel like uh it's kind of hard to relate to not really i didn't find really stuff hard to relate um but like like hmm. hard to be but knowing that like he wore himself on his sleeve like he literally was like a lot of people liked him when he ruled. Like, he wasn't really a jerk. He was very kind. So, like, he... I'm pretty much associating that with, like... He kind of wore his heart on his sleeve. Like, he was like, hey, if I see a peasant struggling and they need, like, shoes, I'll give them shoes. Mm -hmm. I can get shoes as many times as I want. I have a freaking tailor. I have someone that makes shoes that can cobble me shoes whenever the hell I want. Just for less taxes. Mm -hmm. But, like... He, I feel like he was very nice. Like, he fair, So, like, that was sort of, like, my thing of, like, like he sort of plays his heart on his sleeve. Like, he, like, this year during uh, Memorial Day, not Memorial Day, um... Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend, thank you. Um, the directors gave us a challenge, all the nobles, to pick a peasant to be nice to. I picked all of them. Mm. And, like, my thing was, like, I, and I still, I do it here and there. But, like, I go up to them and I say, what is your job? And I ask, I just ask, ask them their job. And they go, hmm. And, like, if it's, like, the distiller, I'll start, like, drinking my water because I can't drink alcohol. Um, on really, at third while we're trying to entertain. But, like, we'll drink water. And I'll be like, hmm. Not as good as the, as the drinks in Ortsal. But idea for you. What if I give you, I talk to the lady mayor and I'll bring you to Ortsal and we'll learn. I'll teach, I'll give the, the knowledge of Ortsal. Mm. And like, that's just how I play it. It's like, he would prefer to go to other shires and be like, be like, do you mind if I give you one of my people for a bit while these people learn under my masters and I'll give them back? He would, I feel like he was very, he would be very generous. He very, he very much liked the land that he came from. Yeah, he was proud of what he was. Mm. And, like, he didn't want to pretty much ruin it. Soil his name. Alright, that was... It was so interesting learning about your, more about your character, especially everything around it. And again, thank you all for listening. It was an amazing time with me, Isaiah, Mr. President. President over here. And Corey, of course. Always a fun time. Uh... We're gonna try Thank to really listening. Mm -hmm. We're gonna try to release more as well. We're gonna yeah, get things going and for sure bring you more content. We hope you enjoy. Uh, rate us five stars. Leave a comment and thank catch you. Catch us next time on Faded Through Time. Exactly. Catch us next time on Faded Through yeah. Time. <laughs>